Hello and welcome to our watercolor journey. Today Heinrich is going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this awesome pine leaf bokeh. Bokeh is a Japanese word that was used to describe old Japanese art where they used to blur the background of their art pieces. And it's also used by photographers to emphasize something in the foreground and then dim or um, fuse something in the background. And uh, today we are going to learn how to do this. Now it doesn't have to be circles, you can use any kind of shape that will blur and help to give this broken kind of effect. Um, bokeh means unfocused or vague, so that is why this word is used to describe this type of painting. And I hope you are going to enjoy this part of the journey with us. The first thing we're going to talk about are the brushes that he used. You can use any brushes, but these are what he used. First is the Princeton Mop, one inch, then a silver black velvet number 12, number four silver black velvet, cum memory point number four, cum memory point number one, and a Barbara Rigger number one. The colors that he used were nickel azo yellow, quin gold deep, cobalt blue, sap green, viridian, shadow green, sepia, and raw sienna. He also used senelier masking fluid and a beautiful um, silicone brush. It is easy with a silicone brush because you can get the glue off very easily. Okay, so the painting is glued, it's pasted, and please make sure that the tape is secure because you are going to make this thing very wet. So use the mop and wet your paper all over. Now we're going to start add color and he used the number 12 velvet and that is nickel azo yellow from core. It's a beautiful bright yellow and it spreads beautifully. Don't be shy to add color. Remember that with watercolor it dries back quite um, dully I think is the word. Um, it diffuses a lot when it dries so you can add a lot of pigment Put your color out there, don't be shy. The next one is the Quin Gold, Quinacridone Gold Deep, also from Core, and just see that beautiful spread that it gives the moment it touches the water. Just add random colors, in this case that one is Sap Green, and do not mix the colors too much on the paper, just add them randomly and very lightly. Although the pigment is strong, you do not brush them into the paper, you just work them in lightly. The third color, this one, is uh, Viridian. Sap green again. And that one is Perylene Green or Shadow Green. little bit of the yellow again. And there we go with cobalt blue. The 
cobalt blue comes at the top because that is the part of the sky that you are representing in this picture. Again, quinacridone gold, part of the sky and the light that is in the picture. Keep in mind what you want your background to look like. So if you think there are little trees or things in the background, then make your strokes accordingly. It will diffuse, it will go fuzzy, but make your strokes according to what the shapes are that you want to represent in the background. Do not be afraid to use strong pigment and just add it randomly. Right, now he's using the shadow green or the perylene green to start making the background twigs and leaves that you will see on the painting. So here you have to use a very strong pigment. The reason why this pigment is stronger here is because it is the middle layer. The colors that you put in first is the back background. This part that is painting now is the middle layer of your picture. So you have to use a little bit of a stronger pigment. And you will see later when the painting has dried that it actually fused a lot. Next, when your painting has dried completely, you can start taking off the glue or the masking fluid and he's using a rubber cement eraser and it is a magic tool it's really just lifts the masking fluid off you can also use your fingers which will result in a very warm hot finger and probably losing your fingerprints or you can use a tissue but the eraser works well Right, now he is using the little stencil brush to start rubbing out little dots on the background. You wet the stencil brush and then turn it around in circles and then press on the area where you work the paper. Don't press too hard. You will vary the pressure that you make to make kind of deeper holes or shallower the harder you press the more it's going to work down into the paper so vary the pressure so that you can get different shades coming out this is a very long time-consuming process so you have to be very patient He felt that the white dots were too stark, so he added some of the nickel yellow and the quin gold to some of the dots just to diffuse the whiteness of the paper a little bit. If there's too many paper white dots, then it just doesn't look natural. Your dots can touch, they can overlap. It should actually overlap. It looks more natural when you do that. If you add too much color, just dab it out with a tissue. Quick and easy. This is the Black Velvet number four brush.
Remember to wipe your stencil or rinse it every time so that you don't transfer residue paint onto a new space that you want to clean. Right, let your paper dry again and then we are going to use the number one comb brush to, I'm sorry, the number four comb brush to add the twigs. Now this is the focus point of your painting, so use a lot of pigment, nice and strong, and draw your lines deliberately. Be careful not to fall into a pattern when you draw these lines. It is so easy to do that. So make sure that you draw them randomly. And although they are basically in the same direction, you can draw them into any kind of direction you want. You are going to add some more tweaks later on, so don't overdo it. Less is more. Now he's using the smaller brush to make the thinner twigs. This is the Kum memory point number one. And it works like a rigger, so he's adding the finer tips and finer needles to the twig. A little bit of detail. You want the twig to stand out, so make sure that it's nice and dark. The water droplets underneath the twig. Add a little bit of blue to give the shadow side of the water drop. Because remember the twig is reflecting into the water drop so you can uh, add some shadow in there on the twig side. Also remember that the water droplets have reflections in them, so if you want to be very detailed you can add a little bit of reflection into the water drops. Here he used a little bit of gouache to just emphasize the water droplets and also 
to add some highlights to the twigs and the little pine needles. The highlights go on top of the pine twig because there, that is the part where the water will be glistening. And it gives a nice definition to each of the little pine needles. Don't be too precise and keep your gouache lines quite thin. They shouldn't overwhelm the twig or the pine needles. Now he's using the rigger and adding another layer of green to the twig, again just to make it stand out a little bit more. The previous layers have dried back a little bit, so to add some twigs, to emphasize some of the pine needles, he just adds it with the rigger. Right, and that's the final painting. I really hope you enjoyed this experience with us and that you will join us again in a future tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.